This video will explore the Meyer via torus sequence. The video will also provide a proof and an example computation. We will start by introducing the theorem. We recommend that if you're watching this, you should have a sufficient mathematical background on the basics of algebraic topology, including elementary homotopy theory and homology. The main motivation comes from the difficulty of computing homology. Of course, simplicial homology is easy to compute, but it's rather limited. Singular homology, on the other hand, exhibits desirable theoretical properties, but it's difficult to compute directly even for slightly non-trivial spaces. Not all is lost since there is a tool for computing singular homology indirectly called excision, which means cutting out certain parts of the spaces. The Meyer via torus sequence is one such tool. It provides an exact sequence that relates the homology of a space with its subspaces under suitable hypothesis. It is also used in induction arguments by building from the subspaces to the space itself. Specifically, we have the following statement. We have A and B as subspaces of the space X, so that the union of the interiors equals X. We can also have X as a union of subcomplexes. Then we have a long exact sequence of this form relating the homology of the intersection, the direct sum of the homology of two spaces, and the homology of the entire space. Knowing the first two then helps us in computing the third. If you're familiar with some homotopy theory, then you'll recognize that this is quite similar to the Van Kampen theorem, which also takes two open subspaces whose union is x, and states that the fundamental group is the co-limit of the diagram here, which is quite similar to the Meyer via torus, as we can see below. In both cases, the space is determined by its decomposition into subspaces and their intersection, as we can see here. Next, we'll provide a proof of the Meyer via torus. To this end, we will use the general theorem on covers of the covers of a space. The statement is intuitive. However, as we simply have a covers of a space and we take the chain group with all the singular simplices that land exactly on one of the covers, obviously this gives us a subchain of the original chain group. The theorem then states that we have an isomorphism on homology. We will not be proving this theorem and the viewer can consult other resources, Hatzer for instance, We're now ready to prove Meyer via torus using the general theorem and covers given here. We label the inclusion maps from A, B, and A intersection B to A and B. Our claim is then that this sequence here is exact. The first one here is the chain group on A intersection B. Here's the direct sum. And we take A and B as covers of X and the chain group that is restricted to A and B. The maps phi and psi are simply the direct sum of j prime and i prime here, and this is jn minus in. To see that the kernel of this map is zero, anything zero here in the direct sum must be zero in a and zero in b. If something is zero in a and b, it must be zero in a intersection b. To see that this map is resective, any chain here is a combination of chains only in a and chains landing only in b. That is precisely what we can obtain from the direct sum as well. Now, in order to see this exactness, the first inclusion here, we do the reverse direction because anything from C, the image of it goes to C comma C. So this is what the image looks like, but this is taken to C minus C, which is zero. So that part is easy. The other inclusion, if some C comma D, this pair is taken to D minus C, and d minus c equals zero, then d equals c. So the chains are equal. So this chain is in a and is in b. Therefore, this chain, c equals d, must be in c and a intersection b as well. So we've proved this inclusion and we've proved the general theorem, the Meyer via torus sequence. We want to remark here that the Meyer via torus sequence actually holds in the case of reduced homology as well, which we'll be using later. Since we're done with the proof, we can move on to the actual uses in computations. This is much more fun and we're going to use it to compute the homology of a suspension. The suspension of a space is defined to be the quotient of this product of the space. Here we're taking x with the interval negative one comma one where we quotient two ends of the space to a point, that is we quotient this to a point here, and we quotient this end to a point here. 
the claim is then that the p tomology of the suspension of a space x is isomorphic to the p minus first tomology of the space x notice that we're taking reduced tomology here we have the statement of Meyer via torus on the right since we're going to need this to prove the claim and we have reduced tomology here as well so what we do to prove this claim is to label this point as u this upper endpoint and this point is v so we define a and b as follows a is the suspension minus the first endpoint and b is the suspension minus the lower endpoint and notice something here a deformation retracts to this point v the lower endpoint and v the point removed here uh, we get b and that deformation retracts to the point u so what we then have is the following the consequence of this is that the homology the p to reduced homology of both a and b that is zero and another good news is that a intersection b that deformation retracts onto x so this this gives us the p homology of the intersection is simply the p homology of just the space x so the long exact sequence that we get from our via torus looks as follows this goes to zero this goes to the p homology of the suspension which goes to the p minus first reduced homology of the space x and that goes to zero so this is the isomorphism we're looking for overall in this video we introduced and proved a useful tool for computing homology the Meyer via torus sequence and used it to compute the homology of the suspension of a space rather easily thanks for watching